Hello, everyone, and welcome to Discussions on Meade County Catholic Radio, WLHN 95.3, broadcasting from Brandenburg, Kentucky. I'm Deacon Greg Bevan. In the marriage vows, the last promise made is, until death do us part. Certainly, the marriage covenant between man and woman is completed at the passing of one spouse or the other. But that doesn't take away the fact that the surviving spouse is left with pain, with sadness, loneliness, uncertainty, and fear, and that's just to name a few. The one left behind has only memories that the bond of love had created over the years. Eventually, the big questions become, will I ever be happy again? Will I ever love again? Our guest this month, Terry Wathen Stull, was married for 30 happy years. Then her husband, Kelly, lost a hard-fought battle to cancer. Soon after that, Terry's battle as a widow began. As so many widow and widowers are challenged with following the death of a spouse. But as difficult as it was for Terry, she felt God's presence from the very beginning, along with her loving family and community. Her story of happiness, of heartache, and survival when we return. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, and not for woe, to give you a future and hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. When someone loses a loved one, the world seems to stand still, as so it did for Terry Wathenstall when she loses her husband of 30 years. But her story today is a message of hope that helps to assure us that God is with us even in the darkest hours. We would like to thank Karen and Doug Stiff, Stonegate Realty, in memory of Mickey Chisholm, Nancy and Ed Tatin family, Lana Goodwin, Darren and Barrett Wathen, in memory of their dad, Brenda Mattingly, in memory of her husband, Paul, and the Stoll family, in memory of Frank Stoll, for making this show possible. Terry gives her testament that with God in our lives, all things are possible. Now for our show. Welcome back to Discussions, and Terry, welcome to you, and want to thank you today uh, for sharing your story on the loss of a loving spouse, which we know affects so many people today. Thank you, Greg, for having me here today, and hopefully this we can reach out and help somebody that may be going through this. Well, Terry, let's kind of go where it began. You met your husband-to-be, Kelly Wathen, at a very tender age of 15, and married him at a very age, very early age, too, a marriage that many said probably would not last, but it did. Walk us through some of the highlights of those 30 years, Terry. Yes, I was uh, only 15 when I met Kelly down. Actually, we met at uh, Painville School. Uh, they were having a ball game, men's ball game, and uh, families were there. The guys were all playing, and when they got done, they said, anybody wants to come up and play, they can. And uh, Kelly was umpiring, and I was hind-catching. And uh, (laughs) told him the ball kept getting out in the way for him to see to umpire. And I said, well, I'm afraid the ball might hit me. It won't hit you. Well, guess what? It hit me. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. And... uh, after that, then yes, we uh, we went out and um, um, 
you know, I, I knew when I met Kelly, uh, like I said, I just, I've always been, when I was 13 was probably when I really uh, became close, knew what my faith, God, what it was all about. And I knew when I met Kelly, it was a piece. I knew he was the one. Hmm. And, uh, of course, at 15, you don't know what you want. People said, no, it'll never last. And, um, of course, we had to go through marriage counseling with uh, Father Meter. And uh, he had to do the uh, test thing that they give you. Of course, everybody, oh, they'll never, they're too young and green. Well, actually, we were very compatible. And Father was very surprised. But I do remember him telling. Um, Father Meter said, too many people get married with that trap door if it gets rough. We'll go out the back door here and divorce and be done. Hmm. So we made a commitment then that there wouldn't be a trap door to go out of. And um, anyway, we went through. You know, following that, uh, of course, Kelly uh, went through his career, his jobs, various jobs, and then you had two sons. Uh, tell us a little bit about your sons. Okay, yes, our oldest uh, son, um, Darren, he was, uh, he was born in um, October of uh, 85. Uh, <clears throat> that was a very joyous day, again, you know, until you see new life, you know, that's about as close to God as you're going to get. Um, of course, Kelly scooped him up and took off with him, and I didn't even get to see him and for about an hour later. But uh, anyway, he uh, we had Darren, and of course, and then we had Barrett. Barrett came along uh, in '89. Uh, we were blessed with both of them. Um, then Kelly got on at uh, Painville School, worked there, but uh, probably his biggest. Um, was when he was on the Painville Fire Department. Um, talk about having to have a lot of faith is to see them leave out in the middle of the night and house on fire or maybe one of your loved ones in a wreck on the side of the road. You know, he just didn't know. Didn't know till he got there. Um, he was uh, very dedicated with that. Um, and that, of course, I worried to death. I always worried about that. I thought, oh, he's going to die in a fire. I'm going to get a call. They're going to come knocking on the door. And uh, finally, I said, no. I gave it over to God. And um, I said, you know, if something happens, at least I know he's doing what he would love to do. But uh, I've always heard give it over to God. Hmm. But to you actually have to do it. You know, Terry, that's quite a testament to you, really. Because when the spouse, whether it's husband or wife, is involved in extracurricular activities or service work like Kelly was for years with the fire department, when they're gone, you're gone from him. So it's kind of your service, too. And uh, I suspect in a way that brought you all a little bit closer together. Yes, yes. There were many a times, sat at the supper table, getting ready to take that first bite, and, and the tones would go off. Well, he was gone. Kids made their first communion. I remember one year, tones went off. He had to go. Hmm. Christmas Eve, mass, you know, drag the kids, you know. But, but I did. I knew that's what he wanted to do, and I and also the community. How many people would call and just thank him for doing that? You know, they were so thankful simple things you know he would help you know somebody might even call him and say hey my car my tires flat or whatever he never hmm. hesitated hmm. he would always jump and do it <clears throat> well even though many thought your marriage would not last it did um it thrived actually um, many said you were perfectly matched <laughs> then i thought it was interesting in your story um, as you approached that 30-year mark, you said you experienced a very vivid dream, which confused you a little, 
but you described it as an encounter with Jesus. Yes, Greg, I did. Um, I still remember it today very plainly. Um, it was flowing water, very sparkly, bright, and I'm just walking through there, and it was like a light calling me in. You hear that. And when I get closer, it's a big rock. Jesus is sitting on that rock. I just know it's Him. And uh, He's not just sitting there perfectly. He's got His leg pulled up and holding His knee. And we were laughing and talking. And then He told me He got serious. And He said, you know, things are going to happen. And... Um, you're going to be afraid, but don't be afraid. I will be there with you. Hmm. And I remember the biggest hug. And uh, I didn't want to leave. I told him, I said, I don't want to leave. And uh, he said, no, you have to. You're not done. You, you're not done yet. And uh, so I remember walking away, and I was so sad because I didn't want to leave him. It was the calmest peace I've ever had in my life. Mm. And um, and I look up, and there's Kelly's dad who had passed away. And he reaches out and grabs my hand and tells me, thank you, and I woke up. Mm. And, uh, I, of course, it stumped me because I didn't, you know, what did it all mean? You know, I just I didn't know at the time what it meant. Mm. Well, certainly this encounter with Jesus would take on a prophetic moment in Terry's life, but that realization would only come later. On Christmas Day 2010, the image of the baby Jesus lying in a manger would suddenly change to the image of Kelly lying in a hospital bed, and the news was not good. God's strength and the strength of others would be needed. When we return, the story changes as Kelly and Terry shared their last few months together, ultimately leading to Kelly's passing onto his new life with Terry left behind to try to discover who she was and who she was to become in the months and years that lie ahead. The story continues when we return. Thank you for listening to the Meade County Catholic Radio Station talk show discussions. Remember, our shows are posted on YouTube for your access at any time. Our shows are intended to inform, teach, and strengthen our faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Don't forget you can listen to our station anytime, locally on 95.3 FM WLHN, broadcasting from Brandenburg, Kentucky. And you can take us anywhere you go with our free app. Just go to the App Store on your smartphone and subscribe. That's WLHN 95.3 FM, where we love his name. Now back to our show. Welcome back to Discussions and with our guest, Terry Wathenstall. Terry, once this very serious diagnosis of cancer was made, the battle for life began. There were a lot of good moments too, wasn't there? Yes, there was, Greg. Um, a lot of people had always told me and Kelly that, oh, you all have the perfect marriage. And I uh, said, yeah, we did. We. We laughed together, we cried together, we prayed together, we fought, we did all that. That was what makes a perfect marriage. And that um, foundation helps, especially when you faced with what we were on Christmas Day. They uh, 
told us there his diagnosis was leukemia and the type he had was rare and his chances were very low of making it and um, of course we were devastated but we also gathered in prayer and I told Kelly I said you know it's okay we're gonna we're gonna it's, we're gonna make it through this I said um, we've had a good marriage good great kids there's nothing to regret at this point we're gonna go forward see what God has for us he's always with us so the oncologist came in and she did she said we're gonna fight this and um, well they did it was a long well it was only a year and a half but it was a long battle days in the hospital the my heart goes out to the medical staff in a hospital they especially on that type of ward they have to deal with uh, this every day um, they I don't think they just kind of scooped Kelly in they realized the they saw I can remember one nurse saying she said this guy's special and they've always had him a special room when he had to go back in because people were always coming in to check on Mr. Kelly uh, Painville School their staff I mean were so supportive and um, through it all Kelly was worried about all those kids at Painville School he didn't want this to be a bad experience for them either uh, like when he was taking his chemo and was uh, losing his hair and everything him and uh, the principal Marie got together and they bought wigs all these different kinds of braided wigs mohawk wigs and he would put them on and they'd send pictures to the kids and and they would you know just he tried to make it uh, as easy as for everybody else um, he um, even the nurses there he was always uh, Cheetos he was craved Cheetos that was his food um, the, uh, they fixed up a IV and had it for the doctor when she came in the nurses and Kelly and said uh, they were giving him IV of Cheetos just <coughs> anything to help smile when you can because there were so many days and people that go through it know what I'm talking about they're so hard nobody tells you about the rough part of chemo treatments um, the sickness and the fevers and trying to find something for him to eat uh, you know I can remember you know he's got to eat somebody we got to find him the nurses came in and on their way to work and brought something that they thought he might like to eat just you know and I fevers and my hands from keeping him trying to get his fever down keeping wet rags my fingers had cracked open and bled and I couldn't even zip a zipper or nothing and she went down and bought, brought in this special hand lotion but people were just so you just saw God everywhere you turned mm -hmm. people were reaching out and even one day when I was leaving exhausted and tired and I had stopped at the store for something and I guess I'm sure my face probably said it all because I don't hide motions well on my face. <laughs> but she, this lady, I didn't know her. Here in Meade County, I thought I knew just about everybody, but I didn't know her. She came up from nowhere, and she put her hand on my shoulder. She said, ma'am, I, I know you're going through something right now, and I can tell it's very painful, and I want you to know I'm praying for you. Mm. And mm. I mean, just... Oh, you, I felt God's prayer. It gave me energy that day. Mm. I needed that. Mm. God knew what I needed when we needed it to get through right. it. And I know there was many other outreach events that took place in the community through those months and different opportunities for Kelly to get out and enjoy what he could in life. But but eventually, after several, several months, it, it came, became clear that Kelly would not be with you much longer. Then I understand the conversations between you two kind of began to change. 
Questions like, has all this pain been worth it? Or should we be mad at God? And what should I do when you're gone? Talk a little bit about some of those conversations and those those special moments that you and Kelly had. You know, Greg, I did. I, at the time, I thought it was cruel to have to watch him die every day. Um, you know, we went to Lexington, and the doctor there pretty well said, do you want to die here in four walls, or do you want to go home? Even that day, <laughs> this man gets his, my husband gets his death sentence. We're sitting out sobbing on the sidewalk, the people that went with us to support us, and uh, we look up, this car pulls in in this vehicle, and this guy is struggling to get out. His wife is dropping him off, and it's obvious he needs a wheelchair, so we're pulling ourselves together. Oh, we need to go help this guy. Turn around. Kelly's gone. He's already left to get a wheelchair for this guy. And here he's just gotten his death sentence, and he's still helping others. Mm. And <clears throat> it just amazed me, you know, uh, he... <laughs> He wanted to go fishing, whatever he could. He was going to live the maximum. And he would come home in the evening and, you know, he didn't ever want the boys or whoever was with him know how bad he was hurting. I could tell. I could tell of his eyes as soon as he got out of the truck. And I'd get him in the house and I'd say, was it worth it? Yes, yes, it was worth hmm. every bit of it. Hmm. I said, okay, that's all I need to know. You know, just, the, you know, spending the time with family and friends. And then, of course, he would get a, got a little worse there. He was laying there one day. We thought he was asleep. Had a family member sitting at the foot of his bed, and he was so angry. He was so angry. He was like, why? Why is God allowing this? Why? This man has gave to his community for years. Why is why is this happening to him? Why can't God be so cruel? Kelly sat straight up in that bed, pointing a finger. <laughs> he said, I don't want anybody to be mad at God. Look at look at my wife. Look at my kids. Look at my life, my community. God has been so good to me. He has blessed me. I don't want anybody to be mad at God. Hmm. And that's that was a uh, opener for all of us. Too. It was a signature moment, wasn't yes. it? Kelly was not mad at God. No, no. He was not. He, um, yeah, he, he even, you know, he told me to. And uh, I know people that, like I said, are going through this with loved ones, you know, and I know it was hard for him, and he told me, he said, this is probably one of the harder things I've probably ever had to say. He said, but if you find somebody that can make you smile again, I want you to be happy. I want you to be happy because you're not done. And you know, Terry, Kelly finally did pass on July the 23rd, 2012. And I use the word pass because he went from this life to his new life. But it was then, it was then that your memory of that dream that you had prior to Kelly's illness surfaced once again. And then you knew, didn't you? You knew. Yes, yes, Greg, I did. When he was taking his last few breaths, I wished he could have talked. His eyes, his face glowed. I've never seen such joy on his face other than the day his boys were born. I knew he was seeing God. I knew it. And I was like, Kelly, 
talk to me. What do you see? Can you tell me? Tell me. But he couldn't talk, but his face said it all. You had a glimpse of that yourself, hadn't you? I had. And it was at that point that I, f I was able to tell Kelly, it's okay. We're going to be okay. You've done great here. You've done, you've done a great job. It's okay. Go. Hmm. I would never ask anybody to come back that peace that feeling I would yeah, just I was happy for him no more pain and suffering his pain was so bad here physically uh, now yes it, it's hard it's harder it's I hear people say you know you have to uh, be strong, be tough. Yes, we were. We were strong, we were tough. But sometimes it's you have to be strong to let go. Hmm. Terry, you're now left to face life as a widow. Walk us through those first couple of years. Well, I remember sitting on the deck on the back of the house in the dark thinking okay 30 years I knew who I was I was Kelly Wathen's wife I knew what our plans were I knew what we were going to do what what you know what we had all this planned out and I remember the sun coming up and I said oh the sun did come up again today, <laughs> but who am I now? I didn't know. I did not know who I was that day. So I had to figure out who I was again. Uh, it was hard watching um, other people like my parents, my mom and dad. I know they ached watching me have to hurt and suffer. And I told my mom, I said, Mom, you can't carry this. This is my burden. I have to do this. I have to carry this. This is part of my healing. And um, I say the first year you're just numb. You go through the motions. Um, again, the community, family, friends were wonderful. Um, second year, unfortunately, is the hardest I felt. That's when reality sets in. Uh, that's when this is real. This is, um, this is really happening. You know, you mentioned something just a few seconds ago, Terry, that uh, really strikes me and that Many, many times, we on the outside trying to help or counsel or give solace to someone who's hurting so bad, and we feel bad because we can't absorb that pain. But you said that's something that you have to do. That is part of the healing process. Um, and then one day, then one day you went to a wedding. And this had been after a couple of years, yes. two or three years after that. Yes. And at that wedding, you reflected on a passage in Matthew's Gospel, in chapter 22, actually. It said, For in the resurrection they never marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Your life took a turn then, didn't it? Yes, it did. I, uh, of course, you know, my wonderful work family, <laughs> they had to put up with a lot from me. Your emotions are all over the place the first two years, at least. Uh, so what I do try to tell people, don't make any sudden decisions. Don't... Um, uh, don't make a shrine. I uh, didn't think I was making a shrine and had some friends at the house that were close. 
I said, look around my house. Have I made a shrine of Kelly? And they looked at each other and they started pointing out all the things that I had setting out. And I was like, okay, yeah, I have made a shrine. That doesn't mean you have to throw it away, get rid of it, box it up. Just box it up. Put it somewhere you can go through it later because your emotions change. You may want to hang on to it. You may not. Um, but I did. And then the girls at work and people were, you know, maybe you ought to get out a little bit. And I'm like, no, no, not going down that road. I'll never want to hurt like that ever again. So I went to this wedding, like you said, and I, their vows, they were exchanging their vows till death do you part. And I, it just hit me until death do you part? I thought, Kelly's died. Has he forgotten me? Does he not? Will he not know who I am? Will he not know that we were married? And then that's when I went and reflected on the scripture reading in Jesus. I could just see him now telling them, no people in heaven, nobody's, you're not, you don't have that title. I, in my heart, I know I'll know Kelly. We'll know each other, but we won't be married to each other. In heaven nobody's married like we do here on earth or but I know we'll know each other that mm -hmm. we had a bond so that's when I was uh, able to pick up and said okay I've got to continue on and Kelly did make me promise him he says you can't quit promise me you won't quit I said, okay. So in those days when I wanted to quit, I did remember that. That kept me going. Um, so I... Um, you know, you went through that process, but, you know, early on those questions were, will I ever be happy again? Will I ever love again? But you did. You are happy. You have loved again. Actually, you've remarried. So you're back to a more stable life, and you do see God in your life each day, and you do feel happiness each day. Talk a little bit about that feeling that you have now. Yes, I, uh, that was my biggest fear, really, was I would never have joy in my heart again. Um, yes, I, uh, I met this, uh, I met my husband now, Jeff stall at church actually we had crossed paths all of our lives but I never knew him I saw him and I had that feeling in my heart again or that I had with Kelly I fought it and I fought it have you ever tried to fight God <laughs> or try to fight love yes God is love right yes so I was like, nope, nope, I'm not going down that road. I'll never want to hurt like that again. Nope, nope, nope. And um, next thing you know, somebody says, why don't you come back and help teach CCD? And I was like, okay, yes, I need to get back into doing that. Well, it just happened his daughter was in there. Hmm. <laughs> so I couldn't get away for everywhere I turned, he showed up. I would go to adoration on Mondays and... He walked in the door. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> so I finally, um, I did after uh, struggling. It was. I, it was a struggle because I felt like I was cheating on Kelly. And, um, but I, God just kept putting him in my heart. And we finally, finally did. I got brave enough and. And I told my boys, I went to my boys first and before I even went out. And I said, guys, what do you think? I said, both of them smiled and they looked at me and they said, Dad already talked to us about that, Mom. Hmm. I said, Dad said, if she finds somebody, I want you boys to support her. I want her happy again. Hmm. Needless to say, I bawled like a baby. <laughs> and um, so I... So Jeff and I have, we've, um, we've been married now almost, uh, well, going on three years, actually. Mm. And, 
and um, <laughs> God has been very strong in our relationship. Um, I do know that God has brought us together. Uh, Jeff's a very uh, Christian man. Very, um, God knew I needed him. And, <laughs> You know, Matthew's Gospel had talked about angels in heaven once we die, so you, maybe that little angel of Kelly was kind of pushing that evolution while you're still here uh, to kind of ease that process for you. But uh, Terry, one last question I have for you. It's been eight years now since you had to face life as a widow, and certainly there's many, many of our listeners and people who know people who are faced with the same challenges, same heartaches, same pain that you've had to face, and um, they're facing that now. But what would your message be if, if, you, if you were to give Terry Wathen Stull's message to them who have that same journey ahead of them? What would be your message? What would be your hope? And what would be your recommendation to them on how to approach their life at this point? Well, <clears throat> nobody, I mean, I don't, nobody can make it without God. It's my, you have to have God. You have to have God in your marriage, in your daily life. Um, he's the one that, it's called faith. You have to trust His way. If you think you have it all planned out, <laughs> no, I can hear God laughing now, but uh, you have to trust His way, not ours. It's when we play God. It's when it um, that uh, doesn't pan out. Um, I do... Um, I know it... it I have a hole in my heart still. Yes, there's, there'll always be a hole in my heart. When you wake up in the morning each day, you need to ask God for strength to get through this day, and He will give it to you. He'll give you a lot more strength than you ever knew you had. And like I say, you just, faith is the only thing that can get you through all these trials in your life. God will send you what you need. Don't give up. I guess I really, when I thought of it, I tried to think of it. If I had went before Kelly and I went to heaven, hopefully, <laughs> and I looked, I would be so excited to tell everybody, look, there's my husband, there's my kids. Look at, I would want them to look, God to look down and see a happy, thriving family. Not somebody that was mourning and being resentful and not living out their life. Hmm. I, would n I, would, I would not want that, to think that I was keeping them from living their life. Hmm. Excellent. Excellent recommendation. Terry, I know this has not been easy, re reliving those times, those last few years, but I think it's also could be rewarding for you to know that uh, you can be the strength of others and there is hope. And you said the sun does rise. It will come up again. And uh, there is happiness. There will be happiness to come. You may have to wait maybe challenge, challenging for a while, but keep your eye focused on what lies ahead and know that it will get better. So on behalf of our listeners and those who will hear your story and those who are suffering, we want to thank you for sharing your story, uh, your story of loss and your story of pain and also, and probably more importantly, your story of faith and hope. And may you continue to encounter Jesus in your life in a special way as your life continues. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Greg, for taking time to do this. 
You've been listening to Me County Catholic Radio Talk Show Discussions. We now return to our regularly scheduled programming, Now in Progress.